Hello! And I'm back on the bank after a well-earned break from fishing. With me old mate Sean this session. Hi guys. It's uh, been nearly three years since I fished with Sean. If you've been a three year plus viewer of my blogs guys. Where we fished on one of Sean's local waters, Hartleton. That's right, we did, yeah. Yeah, almost three years ago. Kind of, it would be three years in July. So it's been well. a while since it's we've been met a long mate. time, yeah. So, um, anyway, Oxley's Lake Linear Fisheries we're on. Uh, we are with another fellow, we someone are, yeah. Sean knows, who's gone a bit further down the bank. So if he catches anything during this session, we'll we'll get him in. And, you know, we'll probably go down at some point during this blog to see what he's doing and what have you. But uh, we got quite a good swim. We've arrived on a sort of a Sunday lunch time. You know, all the weekenders have practically gone home and we've, you know, turned up to almost an empty lake. It literally is. Almost yeah, empty. so we've kind of uh, had a pick of the lake. So we've uh, come down the grass bank. So those of you who know Oxley's, it's, what, I think, was it about 18 acres, 15, 18 something acres? Like something like that, yeah. Yeah, something in the range of 15 to 18 acres. I'm not sure exactly, but... And there's, uh, we're at the island end. If you see right behind me, that is the island so uh yeah i've never fished this side of oxley's before i mean i haven't even been on oxley's for <laughs> so many years i can't even remember six but, years for me but yeah i've never fished this side of oxley's when i have fished it and uh yeah they always say by the island is a good place to fish so that's where we've picked so, so yeah we've got a nice social swim we got a kind of it's a triple swim really so me and sean are kind of next to each other and um we did pick a swim for jordan before he Got here, but um, didn't fancy it. Did he? No, he didn't fancy it. So he, he's fish, gone he? next to him down to our right as you look at the lake. So, well, anyway, all our gear still on the barrel at the moment, guys. So we've got a bit of setting up to do. It's roasting hot, but there are fish showing up this end of the lake, which is a good, good sign. Did Fingers speak to crossed. a couple of anglers that um were leaving just as I turned up, and they said it has been tough. The fish spawned here about two weeks ago, something like that. The lake has been shut for a week while they got on with their business, and it only just opened up again this this weekend. Hopefully so, they're hungry. Yeah, so hopefully the timing is right. Like I said, there are fish in front of us. So, but anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's, Let's go, go fishing. fishing. <laughs> hey guys, so just gonna have me first cast of this session so what i've just did um later on when i want to get fishing properly and and everything when everything's set up what i did i just put a bare lead on this rod cast it to the island just to see how far it was for for information for later in the session and um i sort of chucked it uh, 22 and a half wraps uh sean I uh, got went a bit tighter to the island at 23 wraps, which is probably about right. I'm happy if I chucked it 22 and a half wraps. I've only got soft rods, they're only three and a quarter of like progressive Terry and classic rods, so they're by no means long distance chucking rods at all. And they probably, in my hands, struggle to chuck a PVA bag that far. But that's going to be my starting tactics, guys. I haven't done any kind of really marker work. The the my, my uh, swim is still a bomb sight behind the camera. So what I'm planning on doing, I've got some PVA bags in my bucket already made up. I'm basically just going to pub chuck three PVA bags, one to the island, one to open water, kind of one down the right hand margin, and then uh, you know just fish pub pub chuck style really just to start the session off. Then set the camp up get everything organized then later on i'll um sort of put some rigs on i'll, I'll want to fish it is quite warm so zigs might be an option um but uh but yeah i'll just pub chuck pva bags for now just to get fish in then we'll fish properly later on when the camp's up
Right, here we go guys, this is Sean's first cast. He wrapped up at 23 wraps. Yeah. Uh, oh, little wrap, wrap or two shy. Literally just short. Right. Oh, it's just short. <laughs> oh, was it about a wrap short? Literally about 22 about wraps? Short. Walk back, I'll show you how far it is, isn't it? Oh. Did you have a look at that far back? Oh. There. So about 23, about, about 20 wraps. 21 and a half wraps. Yeah. Oh, I've got your. So, yeah, but a good thing about PVA bags. That's not don't, a bad chance. No matter where they land, yeah. they're fishing. That's it. I'm so happy with that. Good. <laughs> hey guys, so the second rod has already gone out exactly the same case as the first rod. Just a pub chuck out into open water. I mean, you saw the first rod went towards the island. Middle rod just kind of gone to open water. And then as you can see with this swim, we've got a nice margin. This kind of social swim that me and Sean are in. It kind of, uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of almost on a small, small point, so uh, it will allow me to kind of get down that margin a, a little bit. If you heard that bleep, that was a a more hen going over me lines. So uh, yeah, I, I can see from the margins that out in front of me, it's probably it's quite shallow only a few foot deep probably to two two and a half three rod lengths out so I say I'm going to put it down the margins but if that margin over there is anything like this margin it's going to be shallow and I can't see any fish in them shallow so I'll probably do it just off for the end of this kind of branch here and it's but anyway, let's waffle. Let's get it out there. Nice cast, Sean. Probably about a rod length too far than what I'd planned to go, but distance out from the from the bank probably about just right that I wanted. So that is all three rods fishing now, guys. Here we go then, guys. Sean's just doing a recast. If you had a you've had a change of rig, haven't you? Um, I, this was on a solid bag, so what I've done, I'm just putting all three rods on a tight spot or tight ish. Then we get some bait over the top then. Oh, right. What rigs are you fishing now? Um, just a solid boom with some rollies on the end, really. Nothing nothing too technical. But I'll put a flying back head on this one. I just got to see if I can get it on the spot now. Tight to the other. Well, you, you, you see the big tree this side? Oh yeah, yeah you, you've, tree, you've come back a little bit you said earlier on didn't 21, you? 21 wraps now. 21 wraps. Ah, he's on the money. Yes. Nice. Lovely jovely. And if you're wondering guys why he's come back a couple of wraps from where he originally clipped up. Because you said you found some weed tight to the island didn't you? So you've just come back a wrap or two just to... It's quite, it's quite a hard spot just in front of the weed, so I'm on that base. Oh, all right, it's cool. That's a really good spot. Lovely jovely. Right, guys, so we are kind of mid-afternoon now. Um, about four o'clock in it, Sean, something like that? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the rods have been out for a couple of hours now. Camp is all set up. But I've just been watching the uh, Spanish Grand Prix, so uh, I didn't get the rod sorted any sooner because those of you who know me were know I like watching the old Grand Prix so that's just finished camp is all set up and nice and tidy now so I'm gonna make a 
my changes to how I want to fish. So the rods are still fishing behind me but they're going to be coming in soon and I want to fish over some fish over some bait. So I'm going to make up a bit of a spod mix and this is a very simple spod mix, nothing complicated. All I got in there is just literally probably about two kilos of beaten iron pellets of different sizes. There's some four, six and eight mil pellets in there. Obviously you've got your different breakdown rates to give off your, uh, you know, your smaller pellets going to break down, give off their uh, flavours and smells and attraction a lot quicker. Then you've got the bigger pellet that's going to last a bit longer and probably act as a bit of feed. And then all I'm going to do, add a bag of sweet corn. And that is literally going to be my spod mix, guys. So, Sean has spotted out some um, kind of a similar mix, but with more from, with some um, boily cr crumb in his mix. So I have got boilies in the van. So if I need to um, kind of copy what Sean's doing with baiting up wise, if he starts catching, you know, I've got the bait in the van to to copy. So that's going to be my literally my mix of what? Yeah, like I said, two kilos of pellets, kilo of corn, three kilos of bait to last 48 hours. I think that's going to be plenty for this session, guys. To be fair, like I said, these fish have just recently spawned, so they're probably going to have their munch on. So hopefully we've we've timed it right. So. Uh, uh, anyway, right, I'll leave that for a moment, I'm going to get the rods in, I'm going to change to a different rig. I think I'm going to go IQD rigs or fluorocarbon D rigs for no other reason than I just haven't fished with them sort of rigs for a while so I just fancy a bit of a change really to be fair. Right, let's crack on and get that sorted. Right. right guys, instant action, Chris is in, we think it's a cart, bit it's of a gone, strange case. It's, it's gone down here in the snags. It's gone right on the inside. Not sure if you can see it. It's gone right down in, in the marginal snags. Coming. Got a good leader on. I've got no I'm fishing solid bags through ah. through. Let's see, let's put this camera here. Oh yes, yes, that was snags. Right, we've got it. He's out the snags. Oh. That's, yeah, that's, the, that's the only thing when you don't fish a leader straight through you. Yeah. Oh, it's a tench. Is it a tench? What the hell's that? Yeah, that's a tench. Small cut. Small. It's, it's a tench. tench. It's a tench. Hey. Do you want to next? Do you want to do the honours? Bloody good tench. That's all you're in. Jesus. Right, pause that, and then we'll uh, come back. That's a massive tench. Hey. Right, and here we go, guys. I'd say it might not be a carp, but those of you who know me will know that I do love my tench. So I'm more than happy to catch these and for it not to count as a blank. But how about that for a lovely tench? And it's a new PB as well for me. Six pounds, what is six fourteen? So just two ounces under a seven. And that is a new PB for me. So, as far as I'm concerned, guys, even if I don't catch any carp this session, to come away from any session with a new PB under your hat, that's a good session. And I do like tench. So, I'm very happy with how this session's gone. And I even even made the change to the new tactics yet. This was on the solid bag. Um, wasn't even sure what was in the solid bag when I set up, because 
the bait was buried in the bag of pellet, but once I'd unhooked it, I saw it was a pink dumbbell wafter uh, seafood. So, uh, happy, happy. All right, we've already done some pictures. Let's get it back. Hi right, guys, so uh, now that tent has gone back, I've re-rigged that rod onto how I want to fish this session. So we'll start at the top end, so we got the old rigmarole, I, th I think it's the free full rig tubing, I think it's called. But really good rig tubing, really heavy, threads really easy. Lead clip system, I think that's a three ounce lead, I think. I'm, I think I've got on there. Weights are relevant. I've, and then uh, fluorocarbon D-rig itself, or this is a IQ D-rig, whatever material you use. And then on the end of that, I've got a uh, seafood yellow dumbbell wafter set up on it. And because I've got the PVA nuggets, I've just wrapped a bit of PVA tape round the hook just to make sure it doesn't, you know, swing round and catch on the hook on the cast. Just that little bit of protection. So. That's the rig and I'm going to set up all three rods eventually exactly the same way. Obviously I'm going with yellow hook baits because we've already seen I've made up a mix with the corn in the mix so that's obviously to mimic the freebies. Alright, let's get this out back down that right hand side and then we can crack on and get the other two rods wound in and re rip re-rigged the same way all right no need for wraps or anything for this right hand rod because it is just going down that right hand margin on it's only what probably five wraps to that spot so no need for wraps i'm just gonna judge it by eye about where I caught the tench from. And guys, second rod re-rigged. As I said earlier on, exactly the same sort of fluorocarbon D-rig. Everything's the same. So this is my middle rod. So I'm going towards the island. I've just wrapped this one up at 22, 22 wraps. Oh, a little bleep on that right hand rod again. So I don't know if I'm going to hit 22 wraps, but like I say, because these aren't casting rods, these are fish playing rods, so, uh, and I'm not the best caster in the world, so, but we'll see, we'll see. Yes, lovely. Don't know what I was worrying about. Hey guys, third and final rod, I'd say on the IQ D rigs, fluorocarbon D rigs, if you don't use IQ too. Uh, yeah, this was the rod when I was having a lead around earlier on that I'd already wrapped up at, I think was it 21 or 21 and a half wraps. So, I've just done a wrap, uh, a cast at 22 wraps. So I should be able to do this one in theory. No, that's not going to hit the clip. Line pinged off my finger, and I knew straight away that wasn't going to get the range. Take two. As I said already. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> Sean's watching some football match. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
just <laughs> just hit the clip as it was going through the water. Right guys, time to put a bit of bait out now. Alright, because this is kind of fairly close to the island rather than knocking any distance off. I've clipped up at exactly the range I'm fishing, so 21 and a half wraps guys. And what you can hear in the background is my phone. That's my Mrs. Ringtone. <laughs> so, yeah, like I say, I'm not the best caster in the world, and kind of 21, 22 wraps is kind of virtually the limit of my uh, capability. And to be fair, I haven't fished at this kind of range for years and years because. Most places I fish, I, I don't need to fish this range, so... Uh, hey, hey, as long as I can get to the range I'm fishing, that's the main thing. So, what's that? Three I've done on that rod. I'm going to do a couple more and then I'll do the right hand rod. But we don't need to see every spod go out, guys. So, I'm going to cut the recording there and then uh, I'll uh, get back to you when I'm doing something else later. That looks nice and tight to that margin, that does. Not too tight. Yeah. Uh, a, as I said, there's a bit of a weave back just, just on literally just in front of it. Just this side of the weed. Yeah. Oh, bugger. That's swan fodder for later on. <laughs> Just had a premature opening. I'll tell you what guys, if there's one thing I've missed about not fishing for a while, and that's the good old fishing barbecue. I've just had a nice sirloin steak, a minted lamb burger, now I've got a, some chicken on the go, mango and lime chicken. Oh, certainly missed this for 
That's for sure for not being on. I mean, I haven't done a fishing barbecue since last year. Right, morning chaps and chapesses, if there's any women watching, which there probably is, you know, being the sexy carp angler that I am. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's all kicked off this morning. Right hand rod has been doing the business, so I caught this one at first light. And then while I was sorting the camera out, just had this one resting in the margins. And uh, yeah, while I was sorting out the camera, Sean shouts to me and goes, Chris, I only just got the rod back out. And he goes, Chris, your rod's going back off again. So I've got another fish in Sean's sling in the margins. <laughs> Uh, this one's quite distinctive because it's got a bit of a chunk missing out of its tail. But, oh, I think this one's been resting, oh, resting up for about half an hour while the, uh, the rod went back out and was getting the camera sorted. But oh, it's got its energy back while it's been That's resting. That's the problem with you resting, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely little fella. But here we go, people. 20 pound on the nose. Nice little well, common. So, those of you who might have said, oh, you're still blanking because you've only had a tench. This now definitely uh, gets the blank out the way. And it's good to be out fishing again. I like said this was on the IQD rig that I showed you I switched to yesterday yellow seafood dumbbell wafter and as we saw we put five spawns out of bait over each rod so the fish are definitely on the munch right because it's lively we'll uh we'll leave it there we'll get a few pictures and we'll have a look at our other fish all right guys uh carp number one's just gone back Hopefully this one isn't as lively because it's it was only caught oh, ten minutes ago. But this is an absolute cracker. I'd be happy with this on my Christmas table. It's such a cracker. Not to eat. <laughs> no. Not to eat. As a, as a as a <laughs> cr cr Christmas cracker. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yes. How's about that for a scaly bugger, chaps? That is an absolute mint fish. I say the rod had only not long just gone back out. So uh, yeah, still on the. Uh... Oh, Sean's doing some photo for me. Yeah, nice. Get, Get some on the other side as well. So. Uh, 2314 this fish again down that right hand margin by the overhanging tree still on the IQD rig still on the older uh, yellow seafood dumbbell wafter the other fish are definitely on the munch let's have a look at the other side it's, it's, but that is an absolute oh, yes. cracking fish How's about that then, people? <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh. Yeah, so it's safe to say I'm back on the bank with a bang, guys. Absolutely awesome. Don't even know why I had a, had a break from fishing, but yeah, oh, I'm glad I did, though, because I'm certainly enjoying being back out on the bank and catching fish like this is a... Uh, Really made me enjoy it again. Right, let's get her back. Can we catch one now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, so uh, that lovely scaly has all been uh, returned now. Rod's gone back out on that hot spot, if you want to call it a hot spot. Now it's done three fish. 
but I forgot to say in that little bit to camera while I had the fish out that I owe that fish to Sean as well because uh, firstly I was sorting out the camera for the first fish I was back there on the bank uh, sorting out the Anuki mat and you know, the, the camera angle and everything and <laughs> rod was away yeah the rod was going and I didn't hear it and Sean went Chris your rod's going so firstly I owe you for that because yeah, yeah. Sean hit into it and then secondly when I did hit into, hit into it a marginal bit of branch debris had wrapped around the line and I, back there. and I couldn't it was all tangled yeah I couldn't wind in anymore so secondly <laughs> I, I owe Sean that. a second time for that fish because it's a team effort. Because while I kind of held the rod tip, I Sean untangled the branch up the line for me. So nice team effort. So yeah, so that was a uh, so cheers for that, mate. No, you're right. Nice yeah. one. <laughs> so yeah, that was that second fish was, uh, that was good fish down well. to teamwork. So. That's what we're here for, it bit of teamwork. But anyway, I need to. Uh, I rub some... off on you now some luck so I can get one. Go and rub my rods. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, back then rods. You, you, you got to rub this bit for the good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need to put some dry clothes on because while I was putting fish number one back, I I went too deep and I've got a boot full of water and but proper fishing. But anyway, the fish seem to be on the munch. I can see right yeah, now opposite, gone. dead opposite Sean's peg here. There's uh, on the other side of the island. I'm there's, now for him. there's someone playing a fish. Yeah, that is third fish, is it? So that I've seen. So yeah, so after their uh, spawning, it seems like the fish are definitely back on the munch here. Get on Oxleys. Yeah, the camera angle's not very, it's mostly our, mostly our bellies in shot here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I forgot to say that last bit so about the, you know, I wouldn't have, probably wouldn't have got that fish in if it hadn't been for Sean nah, on the bank with me, because... Yeah, bit of a nightmare picking up a bit of bit of tree debris out the water there. So, Jordan, but, Jordan, oh yeah, come here. Come, come there, you haven't been in the blog yet. I haven't got you in the blog yet. <laughs> come and say hello. You're, you're fishing with us. It makes it look like we're making it up. So here's Jordan, guys. The other guy fishing with us, a bit further down the back. I've got the camera Indeed. angle set a bit too low. So this is Jordan, guys. He's um. What, in one swim, two swims to our right you've gone? Yeah. Which was kind of where the fish were shown in mass when we got it yesterday, wasn't it? He so, made a fatal error. Yeah. Still time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's an empty swim on the left of Sean here where where we did put a bucket in for you, but you fancied down there, didn't you, where that? Yeah, there's a lot of fish down there when we put him in there. But there's not been so much shows now, has there? No. Uh, anyway guys, so anyway right I need to put some dry clothes on so now you've met Jordan hopefully we'll get to see you at some point with a fish in your hands. Hopefully. <laughs> right, see you in a bit guys. The footage. Right then guys, quickly before the battery goes, Chris, his left hand rod has just absolutely teared off. And we've just put the two fish back and he's on again so I'm going to leave you guys here and hopefully you can get the action, I'm just going to help him out. Right. Yeah, you're on one bar, you're right at the moment. <laughs> happy, happy guys. 21, the 21 and a half wrap rod. We've seen fish boshing. If you can see on the island, guys, the uh, middle tallest tree. That's where I was casting this rod to. And it's... Uh, we've seen fish kind of this side and the other side of that overhanging tree boshing out well yesterday evening and this morning haven't we and it's yeah. uh, just kind of like oh you know it's going to go at some point because there's fish there and it's tight in there Hopefully we get this fish in going and then I'll get back to you when the fish is on the bank. Right then guys, you ain't gonna believe this. I was just up the bank setting up my looking at in camera for uh, sorting out that fish I've just had. 
and Sean's just shouted me, you're in. So yeah. as you can see, Sean's just picked up my rod guys and, yeah. and started playing it for me. So do, do you want to carry it on seeing you've picked it up? No, not really. That doesn't oh, all right. Then. <laughs> right. For that's you. the middle rod at 22 wraps that's gone guys. So. I've got him, I've got him on the beat so he's coming back this way. So. So cheers Gilly. And on top of all that, that fish I've just had guys, wiped out Sean's rods because it kited right round to the left. Just my luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's come on. Oh. Oh. oh well, never mind. I had that going sweet. Yeah, I think that was where I was concentrating on talking to the camera, not concentrating on playing the fish. That's right, you'll have to get it back out of the right. shit later, haven't it, isn't it? But it definitely went because it's, uh... Oh, that bait hasn't been nibbled. All my baits so far, guys, have all been nibbled by little tiny claws. But this one hasn't been nibbled, so, uh... Right, guys, so, unfortunately, I nearly had carp number four. So, uh, Sean's being an awesome gilly at the moment. <laughs> God, he's helped me land fish, unhooked tangles, picked, picked two rods up for me while I've been trying to sort the camera out. And on top of that, that, that fish that's in the margins at the moment waiting to be filmed. <laughs> Wipe this rods out. I, I bet you're regretting coming fishing with me now, aren't you, Sean? <laughs> Look, guys, so now that rod's lent up against that bivvy after that fish loss my own fault I was talking to the camera should have concentrated on playing the fish so it's all Sean's hard work of picking up the rod and playing it to begin with I just I just chucked out the window <laughs> sorry about that no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it felt a bit weird playing on somebody else's rod you know it's a bit strange it's always weird playing with another man's tackle isn't well, it yeah you know what I mean yeah <laughs> no choice but past but here we go guys so this is the that's fish weird. that's just wiped out Sean's rods. Oh, still a lively burger. Can get them scales. Yeah. That's an absolute Don't have to worry about scale. me getting wet because here we go. So yeah, so the left hand rod, 21 and a half wraps to that island. Well, say it's a margin. It's not right in the margin. It's about a rod length short of the margin. How big was it? Uh, 1610. 1610. Yeah. So yeah, still on the yellow. Seafood Dumbo Wafters, I'll see because that's what all the rods went on. They're doing the damage there, aren't they? Yeah, they're not doing damage, they're catching fish. They're doing the damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's being torn but, apart. Yeah, absolutely cracking scaling fish. Like I say, uh, and due to my own incompetence, I could have had, had four fish, so it's uh, it's safe to say after these fish spawned a couple of weeks ago, they're definitely back on the munch, guys. So, so That is a beauty. So three carp nearly a fourth and a tench even if nothing else happens after this one i can't complain it's been the a banging session back. <laughs> nice one <laughs> cheers gilly yeah <laughs> and guys so i'm almost sorted i've had to do a a full head to toe clothes change this morning after getting in the water everything pants socks <laughs> but, uh, yeah so we're we're practically fully functional again. Middle rod to the spot at 22 wraps out. That's already just gone out. I didn't film that one. Well, uh, yeah, just at the spot. It does the rig kind of hit the water as the kind of the line hit the clip. So <laughs> just got there. So this left hand rod, 21 and a half wraps, is just about to go back out, guys. So. The wind has uh, switched directions as well this morning, guys. Yesterday we had a kind of a, a right to left breeze. Today we've got a, it's done a complete 180 and it's blow, blowing uh, left to right. What did I say to begin with, right to left? Yeah, it was blowing right to left yesterday, this morning it's left to right. So. Right, anyway, 21 and a half wraps. Let's see if we can get back out on that spot, because, uh, yeah. It's certainly been showing fish uh, and now doing fish. Do 
do that again. I felt it hit the clip, but when the rig was already sinking through the water. Wet the line a little bit as I wind in. That might help the cast go out a bit better. in the line is the trick to a smoother cast. The king does it again. Right hand spot again. Good old spot that. I'm not in open water now. I thought I was running up towards Buddy Jordan, that was. Feels a lot better this fish as well. Yeah. You watch it, it'd be a little 10 pound buddy teenager just with a lot of energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. When I went in with me wellies, I thought, oh, that margin looks shallow, and then I sunk down into it and I was like, oh, yeah, it's deeper than it looks. <laughs> He's going where he wants to go. <laughs> This is a nice margin. Much better. What a gilly you are today. <laughs> right, and guys, carp number four landed, and carp number three, fish number four, if you include the tench off of that right hand mark. Well, I'm calling it a margin, it's not really a margin because I'm, I'm fishing kind of sort of three rod lengths out from the margins really, but I'm calling it margins because it's kind of tight to the overhanging trees. It, it, it's irrelevant, it doesn't really matter, but it's the right hand spot fish. down the right hand side, but this is a lovely old bruiser. What, what was it, 22 and a half? 22 and a half. 22. 
How's about that for a fish, guys? A proper old bruiser, and it went on a proper run as you as you saw. R Sean was just about to pick the rod up, as you probably thought. And I was like, "Oh, now I want to get some on film." So uh, I wanted, I just wanted you guys to see how how fast it was. Well, that's just from his head. Yeah, it would have just been spawning, yeah, hadn't they? It's, it's, yeah, it's a spawning it's, Yeah, I just wanted you guys to see how fast it was running before... Uh, oh, he was gone. Before Sean picked... He was going to pick up the rod, was not like, Chris, get it! Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, quickly put the camera on! <laughs> just so you guys could see how fast it was running. That is a beauty, though. Uh, but yeah, that little right-hand spot... He's been spawning hard. Yeah. That's uh, like I say, that's that's my third carp off of that spot now, and uh, I don't know if it's a spot that a lot of people would choose to fish, being right in front of the island. I think most people would just automatically put the rods out to the island and kind of maybe ignore the margins, but you that, know the saying, never ignore the margins. Hundred percent. That is a cracking fish. Again, IQD rig again, guys. Yellow seafood dumbbell wafter doing the business. I've definitely come back after my break with a bang, that's for sure. Right, Sean's ready to take a few photos for me. So, that's, but yeah. Oh, there you go, he's getting that rod back out. I would call it the hot spot, but it's not even a spot because I'm not clipping up. I'm just kind of pub chucking it to the general area of that kind of, you know, that overhanging branch there. So, and I'm just sort of, you know, feathering the line down when I feel that it's at the right spot. So yeah, it's not really a hot spot, it's kind of like a hot area. But yeah, anyway, still same rig. Obviously flat pair, don't need a distance lead to sort of chuck it sort of five, six wraps wherever it's going. Still yellow dumbbell wafters, still the IQ D-Rig, fluorocarbon D-Rig, whatever you want to call it. Again, still wrapping the hook up with PVA tape because I've not got me PVA nuggets with me. But, yeah, it's been a nice little area, that. So that four, four carp landed, three of them all from this spot, including that tent. guys that rod has literally been out three four minutes and it's just gone again that is a spot there isn't it i haven't even topped up with uh any more bait yet i, I was just about to put some more bait out oh sorry pardon the piggy drinking cherry coke <laughs> Uh, look at that old Gilly comes to hand again. Cheers, Gilly. <laughs> Someone's got to get their feet wet. He's staying right this time. Jesus, I think I need to put two rods down on that spot. Just turn your rods and have all three down there. <laughs> yeah. Might as well. I would, you back and out. No, nah, I've had runs off of both I of think, them. I spots think you put too much pressure on it then, then. Yeah, that's what I mean. I could kill it with two rods on it. It's one of them, innit? It's, if one rod's doing the do, it's. it's, uh, it's I might put too much pressure on the spot with too many lines on that spot. Oh, 
Oh, oh, I thought I'd lost it then, buddy. Line flicked off a door fill. Try and keep him left coming towards you. Get right, I mean. Oh, he looks another good one. It's the same fish, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, it's definitely not the same fish. See in the net? He is now. <laughs> Carp number five, guys. <laughs> Alright guys, we've just had to treat a lifted scale with the old propolis because uh, during that fight you might have heard me say, oh, the line's flicked off a dorsal. Well, I'd say it wasn't a dorsal, it was one of its scales just behind its uh, gills because when it was in the net it was bleeding a little bit. So. Um, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, that's part of past all playing fishing, but what you can do when that happens, treat it with a propolis, guys, always carry some sort of fish care kit. Propolis, in my opinion, is the best you can use. Right, let's show you this fish. Biggest one so far, guys. I reckon this one's been held up because it's got a few leeches on it. But one there on its head. Get rid of that for you. Here we go then guys, biggest one yet. 26 pound on the nose. Sean was calling it 26 and an ounce, wouldn't you? It, but, was, it was 26. But I'm, I'm not gonna quibble over an ounce guys, so I'm gonna call it 26 exactly, but what a bruiser this fish is. It's absolutely full of old battle scars. But yeah, that right hand margin, and like I say, that rod from that last fish had literally been out three, four minutes. I was just about to put some more spot out, because, yeah, <laughs> they're obviously feeding. And uh, I didn't have the chance. The rod absolutely ripped off again. Let's have a... Look at the other side. And, you, and you'll be able to see, you might not be able to see it because like I say the propolis has done its job now guys, but just here by my finger was where the lifted scale was. But uh, yeah, absolute bruise of a fish. So the biggest one yet, I think that five fish were easily averaging into the low 20s on weight now. But yeah, I can't keep that rod in the water at the moment. Cheers, Gilly. Pissed off at you, eh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, fucking sniff, mate. Right. The clock king's back there, they call him the king for a reason. Oh, right. right. Get some pictures <laughs> of that one. He's absolutely bossing it. Right. Right. Here we go then, guys. After Sean's been my Gilly for uh, five carp and a tench so far. He's finally in on his middle rod. Just sat here chewing the fat and uh, middle rod just up oh, the 22 wrap, 21 wraps. 21 in a bit, yeah. No, sorry, 21 on the nose, yeah. 21, yeah. Was that where, the one you changed to a yellow hook bait? Yeah. Oh, fish still boshing on my spot. He's right on it as well. Oh, that fish has gone right out to uh, my area, ain't it? <laughs> I can't stop it. I tell you what, lucky I back led and flying back led, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. 
feel decent? Yeah, it does actually. Well, with that sort of run, you can never know, do you? Usually big is just kite, doesn't it? Picked up another line. Is that picked up a lot? That's nowhere near that line, no. is it? That rod's over there. That's put out a bit of bait, look, and it's brought them in the area. It's not near your left hand line, is it? It will be now. Oh! <laughs> like I said, you go, oh, is it your rod get well? <laughs> Giving you good, uh, yeah, it's gone over your line, hasn't it? That's why I don't fish tight lines, guys. I only ever fish tight lines on zigs, like fishing tight lines. Too easy to get a tangle, in my opinion. It's still right out there, isn't it? Out in open water. Did you just loosen off that drag to make it look like a better run? Oh. Is it off? That was not. Oh, flicked what? off. That fl went slack as hell there. <sighs> I thought you'd lost it then. What did the flick off? Must have just flicked off a fin or something. Flicked off some of that. Well, that was in my mouth then. Oh, I thought I'd come off by the way that. that it must have had a load of line round a peck or something and just... Right guys, we'll get back to you hopefully when Sean's got it on the bank. I'll um, turn the camera off so that we don't uh, hopefully jinx this catch with the camera being on. So uh, hopefully see you shortly. Right guys, unfortunately we've had a cut off, that fish had, uh, it, it looked like it had gone right round your middle rod, didn't it? Yep. It had, we were trying to work out whether the line had gone over and it was, no matter what way we lifted the line, it was still pulling your line, wasn't it? So, uh, just cut me off. Yeah, we were uh, trying to get. That, r that rod in to try and get it out of the way and uh oh, a nice fish as well man unfortunately in doing so it's uh the tangle's just gone let's get it back out there and go again right guys so uh, since fish is four and five it's gone a, a little bit quiet again Qu uh quite in my swim that is but uh so I think now's the time to put a bit more bait out. So I'm going to start off with putting most of what bait I've got left with me on that right hand spot. See, that's where most of my fish are coming from. Uh, but I'm going to spot exactly how I've been casting to it and that's just pub chucking it and dotting the bait around because I'm not landing the rig in any particular one place. So. I'm not going to land a spot in any particular one place, so... 
Right, anyway, let's get some bait out there. I'm going to put five bombs on that area, just like I did yesterday. My mix is exactly the same as I made it yesterday. I haven't changed anything about it. It's still the mix of beet and anna, pellet and sweet corn. I'm going to do two more and then we'll do the spots up by the island again. Right guys, so that's the five bombs done to me right hand area. I'm now going to I might have five bombs worth of bait left in there for each island rod area. So we're still clipped up at yesterday for, at the 22 wrap range. That's half the effort is winding back in from that range. little bit right to where I was fishing, or not was, am fishing. Right, I'll do two more on that one and then we'll do the left hand rod spot. Right and guys, so as it goes, the mix I'd made up yesterday, I only had enough made up to beat up that right hand area and me middle rod. So uh, I just had to quickly nip back to the van, go and get some more bait out of the van. So I've got three kilos of pellet in there. It's all the seafood pellet. There's a mix of four mil, six mil and eight mil pellet. 
250ml bottle of the sea food bait glug concentrate whatever you want to call it Oi geese don't hiss at me you come into my swim appreciate this is probably sounding very noisy on on camera guys but there we go all them pellets are lovely and glistening and then just to kind of help soak up all that glug while I put the van in this bag I quickly got about a kilo of uh, seafood boilies as well just crumbed it up quickly in the quarter crusher when I say crumbed it up it's not a fine crumb or anything it's, a, it's kind of chunks bits and pieces kind of bit of a powder in there as well so just something to help soak up all that glug I've just put in there has done absolutely perfectly because I don't want my pellets to go too mushy because I'm definitely not going to use all that this session so that is looking like right that's basically my spod mix guys what I'm going to put out on just one rod but if the fish still keep coming I might put more bait out later on there's a chance I might put more bait out tomorrow morning so but that's a nice little little pellet and boily crumb combo mix there I think right let's get some of it out there Right, we're now ready to put some bait out over the left hand rod guys after that little pause in, in proceedings. That is a lovely carpy banquet mix that. Absolutely stinks of seafood. So when I've done me kind of a uh, fifth and final bomb over me middle rod, I've wound in half a rod length and then clipped it up again. So we're we're now clipped up at the sort of 21 and a half wrap range that I'm fishing on my left hand rod. A rod length to the right if anything that one we do have a bit of a left to right blowing winds now so uh, maybe I just need to uh, take that into consideration and aim a bit left of me big tree On the money. <laughs> Gotta be fair, I didn't think I'd be making up another batch of bait, but uh, if it's actually turned into a bit of an epic session, I've got no reason to worry about putting plenty more bait out because the fish are definitely on the munch, that's for sure. Landed on the money. Oh. <laughs> 
Right then guys, so uh, I've uh, just refreshed the baits on uh, the middle and left hand rod that I'm fishing to the island because uh, since that mad spell this morning where <laughs> everything went a bit mental those two island rods haven't been touched since then so um, I'm happy with the baits you know you know they, they could have fished through the night but some of the baits we've been uh, winding in you know I've had the old little uh, claw marks on them so it was more just for peace for peace of mind making sure I had a a good full bait on my rig for going through to the night and you know not half a bait or quarter of a bait that <laughs> Sean brought in on one of his rods earlier on so uh so yeah so the middle rod on the right hand side of the island at the 22 wraps I've already just done that one and I'm gonna have to be quick because the rain's just come in and we're forecast some some really heavy rain any time now right through to about five o'clock this morning so I need to get this done quick so I can get the camera back away falling through the water. So wet the line a bit and I wind it in. So the 22 rod wrap, wrap rod went out first time sweeter than that. going down through the water just go showing off my uh, ineptitude at casting <laughs> like I said, as I said earlier on in the blog these aren't long range casting rods at all guys these are the Terry Own Classic rods which are a fish playing rod rather than a oh that's no good back leg's gone through me tip height yeah, these are the Terry and Classic rods. So these are a, a fish playing rod rather than a rather than a casting rod. So right, take three. lack in casting ability they more than make up for in fish playability which is what I prefer that's more my fishing kind of style so it's a rod that I prefer for pretty much you know 95% of my fishing right guys uh, that is them two rods resorted out I'm, i've not bothered with the right hand rod because that was um kind of renewed sort of only sort of several hours ago so i'm not going to worry about that rod but uh yeah just it, like i say it was just for peace of mind just make sure that the just so i knew that the base wasn't craved that's all uh Right, anyway, I'm sure that rain is on its way, kind of behind the camera, so unless any fishy action happens during the night, if it does, I'm going to have to film from inside the bivvy if the rain is as heavy as what's forecast. 
Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed the last fish hasn't been landed yet. <laughs> All right guys, so uh, just a quick update. So uh, the right hand rod has just been refreshed with a new bait. But I was forced into it. I was forced into it by another fish going on that rod. And unfortunately I had a hook pull. It absolutely ran and ran and ran. Every time I was gaining on it, it just it just took double the amount of line back. And um, yeah, it was a bloody good fight. It, it was, Sean was in the water with a landing net ready for me, but yeah, it was going left, right, left, out. I'd say every time I seemed to gain 10 yards on it, it was taking 20. So, um, I said, I did say to Sean this afternoon, I think the only thing that could top this session off for me now would be to finish it off with a 30 pounder. And I fear that may have been it. Because I could feel the weight behind it. I'd tightened the clutch right up fairly tight. And even with a tight clutch, it was just doing kind of big surging, powerful runs. But anyway, as it is, sort of, it was close to being netted. Sean said he could see it. It was, it, I mean, it was moving a lot of water. Sean said he could see it was a scaly one. It was probably about another rod length off from being netted. And then all of a sudden, everything come flying back at me. So, yeah, I mean, the hook's still good. The hook's still straight and pointy. It's, it's still sharp, so just one of them things, but... I fear that may have been the 30, that may have uh, topped the session off for me. Right guys, so, meet Jordan. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah, either we've just had the call and uh, yeah, it's his first fish of the session. How big mate? Uh, 21 pound. Oh. First one, bit of oh. blank. Yeah, I thought, there we go, I'll try and use my head torch guy for to just see the fish, so. Again. Thank you very much, buddy. Yeah, nice, it's give you a bit of a nightmare, hasn't it? It's uh, wrap, yeah. <laughs> took out your other lines. <laughs> Definitely. Right, I'll leave you to sort that out. I'm going to go and get back into my bivvy where it's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, mate, well done. Buddy, thank you. Ah. Good morning everyone, so fishing wise it was a quiet night, uh, quiet after I'd lost that fish and quiet after Jordan had had that one. I got woken up at, at quarter to five this morning with a one going right past my rod tips and setting off all three alarms. Uh, yeah, and I only just woke up again now, sort of, what's it, about half past eight now, so it's, uh, yeah, sun's up, which is nice, because it absolutely hoofed it down with rain all night. I think it's only just stopped about, about an hour ago, so, uh, yeah, so everything's nice and wet this morning. Uh, we are due to pack up fishing in about three hours time, so I don't think it's even worth kind of winding the rods in and redoing them to be fair, because uh, it's going to be time to start a slow pack down in the next hour or so anyway, so. Right guys, fish number six of the session of just happened, I say just happened, I don't know when it happened actually because I was winding me rods in and uh, yeah let, let's just say between my lines and Sean's lines we had a bit of a nightmare, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, A bit? Yeah put it this way, Sean's got no lines left in the water and I've only got one rod left in the water. <laughs> And the result of that carnage, and I mean absolute carnage, 
is this £16.12 common. So fish, so fish number six, yeah, it's completely wiped out all of Sean's lines, one of my others. It was off, off the island and I can't tell you whether it was the left rod or the middle rod because of the <laughs> carnage of fish calls because in the end we had to hand line it in. <laughs> but it is fish number six on the bank. Uh, yeah, this fish just needs to get back because it's been a right bugger. <laughs> Right guys, that is it. We have come to the end of our session. Me and Sean are all packed up. You're still doing a couple more hours, aren't you, Jordan? Yeah, I'm going to pack up soon. If Jordan does catch anything between now and the end of his session, I'll get Jordan to send Sean a picture Not and then to send it to me and we'll put at the end of this, end of this bit of footage. But anyway, guys, that was my uh, first time I've caught out of Oxleys and <laughs> what, what a load of captures I had. Six landed, two losses, and a PB tench. So I've had an absolutely epic session. Well done. Sean, not Smashed so much. It. Smashed it top right. Yeah, we, we had a bit of a nightmare last thing this morning. We, oh, <laughs> you haven't had the best session. No, I haven't. I'm down a rod, but the less they will, the less we say about that, the better. Well, You'll we... gain a new one, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's been a good session. Like I say, I've never caught an Oxleys before up until this session. And yeah, and you know, what a way to come back from the kind of two month break I've had from fishing and blogging. It was a rest I just needed so I didn't get bored of it and you know how it is sometimes, guys. But anyway, nice to meet you, Jordan. And you, buddy. Good fishing with you after nearly three years again, mate. Doing tar next, right? <laughs> yeah, sometime in the near future. Don't, it might not be the next video, but certainly Within the next few videos, we're going to we're going to book on the new lakes at um, Tar Farm here at Linear. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. It has been an epic session. Till next time, tight lines. Cheerio, guys. See ya.